Okay, so we're gonna begin the next theme. It's not gonna take very long. In fact, we may even get it finished today, okay? Uh, it's not officially a theme on the VLE anymore, which I'm not entirely sure why, because it's definitely in the exam. Uh, so I'll just kind of bundle it in now, and we'll just assume that we will meet this kind of thing again, okay? So, we are starting a new theme. It is called Simultaneous Equations. Now, who in here has met Simultaneous Equations before? Okay. Uh, yeah, so some of you have already. Now, are you happy we've met the word equations before? Okay, it's just basically saying one thing is equal to another. For example, y is equal to x minus six. Simultaneous, what does that mean? At the same time. Yeah, you're doing something at the same time, okay? So in this case, in this case, I've given you two equations here, and I want you to solve them simultaneously. I want you to find uh, solutions which work in both equations, all right? So let's think about how we could do that. So first things first, what type of equations have I written on the left-hand side of the board? Ignore the right-hand side. What have I written on the left-hand side of the board? What type of equations are they? Oh, are they quadratic? So it's not quadratic because it's got, not got x squared in, so you can rule that one out. What's the highest power of x in this case? Squared. It's one, right? Because that's an x to the power of one. Oh, yeah, so I said ignore the one on the right, look at the one on the left, yeah? So x to the power of one and x to the power of one. So what type of equations are both of those? Yeah, uh, not quite. So, okay, do you recognize this type of equation? We've looked at this in the previous theme. We have y equals something times x plus something. Oh, y equals something times x plus something. Equation. It's a linear equation, which means that they correspond to a straight line. Now, I just want you to park that for the time being, just park that idea for the time being. Let's think about how we could solve this. So. If I solve these things simultaneously, I am asking you for a value of x and a value of y which works in both of these equations, right? So how could I go about solving this then? Uh, we simply uh, x minus y minus y. We, we subtract the first equation from the se second equation from the first equation. That's definitely one way of doing it. That's definitely one way of doing it. That's not actually the way which I'm going to do it today. Uh, I'm going to do it in a slightly different way, but that is definitely one way of doing it. You can add it. So the issue is, the issue is, is that I have got y's and x's going on in both equations, right? So it'd be lovely if I could get rid of either x's or y's. I could substitute. Fantastic. How could I substitute it? Absolutely right. So I know that y in the top equation is just x minus 6, which means in the second equation, whenever I see a y, I could just replace that with x minus 6. Okay? So you see a y there, I know that y is x minus 6. So x minus 6 must also be equal to a half x minus 4. Now just check, have I got rid of all of my y's? Yep. Yeah, so I've just got an equation in terms of x. So now I could solve this. How could I solve it? All the x's on the other side, yeah, fantastic. So I'd add 6 to both sides to leave me with x equals a half x. What would I go here? Plus 2. Plus yeah, positive 2 plus 2. Uh, and then get the half x on that side by taking it away. Would you be happy I'm just going to be left with a half x on the left-hand side? That equals 2. What could I do to both sides now? Uh, times 2. Times 2, yeah, fantastic. So I just end up with x equals 4. Okay. Are we finished? No, we need to check if the answer is correct. Ooh, what do you mean by that? No, we need to look. Yeah, you're happy that what I said at the very beginning, I'm looking for a value of x and a value of y, which works in both equations. So that's a common mistake which people make. Like they clearly know what they're doing, and I must confess, I sometimes make this mistake as well, right? You get to this point, you're like, oh, I've done the work now, I can move on to the next question. You need to make sure that you have actually answered the question which you've originally been asked, all right? So how could I find y, given that x must be equal to 4? Does it matter which equation I stick it in? So I've got two to choose from, this one or this one. 
No, it doesn't matter which equation I stick it in. So I'm just going to go for the first one because I don't really fancy doing halving xing and stuff, right? So if x equals 4, what must y be equal to? You happy? Yep. Yeah, because 4 minus 2. Now, how could I check that? How could I check to make sure I've done this right? Just put it in one equation. Yeah, I could check it in the other equation. So I just happen to stick x equals 4 in that equation. Let's just check it. What's half of 4? What's 2 take away 4? So that also works. Okay, so it's a good check that you can use there. Now, if I give you a value of x and a value of y, what are you thinking about here? Remember at the very start I said that both of these equations are straight lines, they're linear equations. If I give you a value of x and a value of y, what does that remind you of? It's coordinates, right? So I could write this as 4, negative 2. So let's think about this. Let's think about what the graph y equals x minus 6 would look like. So what would the gradient be? What would the gradient of y equals x minus 6 look like? Or well, be? What do you mean? Like the midpoint? The gradient. Is it the slope? It's 1, the slope, exactly. It's the number in front of the x. Yeah. You happy? So the gradient is 1, which means that if I step across by 1 in the positive x direction, how many do I move up or down by? Up by one. Yeah, fantastic. What's the y intercept? The y intercept is the b. Uh, no, uh, y equals m s plus b. So what's the y intercept? Negative six. It's negative six. So if I plot that, would you be happy that I get a graph that looks something like that? Yeah? So it goes across the y axis at negative six, and it's got a gradient of one. So every time I go across by one, I go up by one as well. Okay? What's the gradient of this graph? This one here, the second equation. It's a half, right? It's half. Which means if I go across by one, how many do I go up or down by? Uh, two. Uh, like, one is over one, so uh, up going uh, one. And if I go across by one, how many do I go up by? Half. It's a half, right? That's literally all gradient means. It's just the definition of gradient. If you go across by one, that number tells you how many you go up or down by. Okay, so in this case, it's positive, so you must go up by half. What's the y-intercept? It's negative 4. Good. So if I plot that, I get something that looks like this. And you see these two graphs, they intercept each other. Okay, so I've got this graph here, which looks something like that. I've got this graph here, which looks something like that. Okay, obviously I've drawn it accurately on the screen. You notice that there is a point of intersection. There's a point of intersection. Any guesses for what that point is? Not quite, it's what we found, okay? Four, negative two. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, how many solutions have we got here? One. Just one solution. And that makes sense. Firstly, you notice both of these equations are linear, right? So it means the highest power is one, so therefore we're expecting one solution. So you can think of it like that. But also, look at the graphs, look at the graphs. Would you be happy y equals x minus six will carry on going forever and ever in each of these directions? Would you be happy y equals a half x minus 4 will carry on going in each of those directions? So will they ever meet again? No, it's quite sad. They only meet once. That's it. Because they shoot off then in different directions. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, good. So hopefully that kind of gives you an overview of simultaneous equations. I'm looking for a value of x and a value of y which works in both equations. But also think about it graphically. What am I actually doing here? If I was to plot each of these graphs, I'm looking for the points where they intersect, okay? Now, I've given you two other ones, and I'll give you a couple of minutes to have a go at that yourself. Um, but just as a bit of a spoiler, I've actually plotted these on the screen. So if I get rid of those two, actually. I've plotted each of these graphs on the screen here. So if I zoom out, okay? So this one is weird. This one is really weird. Uh, don't worry about that one. But you're happy the second one is definitely a linear equation. Definitely a linear equation. Uh, now, how many solutions am I looking at? Two. Two, right? I'm looking at two solutions. My task to you is find those points of intersection. Find those points of intersection.